Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Hope Mass Tom and thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you are new here, uh, my channel is typically dedicated to beauty and talking about beauty items and reviewing them, loving my collection of makeup the way it currently is, trying to not spend too much money on my collection, but also, you know, it's that's kind of the normal, that's the normal vibe of my channel. However, if you read my community, if you're a subscriber and you read my community post, I I think on Saturday night I took out my contacts and I scratched my eye a bit. That or like an eyelash got stuck in my eye or something <laughs> something of the sort. My eye on Sunday was really irritated and basically what happened was my eye is still a little bit irritated. I'm hesitant to put makeup around it, near it. And I was going to do some makeup tags, but I figured since I'm not wearing makeup right now, why not make not makeup content, but not like hard content either. So this is going to be a video for the real ones, the ones who want to get to know me better. I did this on my, I did this for my patrons, but it was a different, it was a different one. It was, a, I'm doing a MySpace survey. So I'm incredibly verbose. I will probably go on and on and on about some questions and answer other questions with a single word. For those of you who don't remember MySpace, MySpace was a social media platform that was in the early to mid 2000s. It was when it was the most popular. Basically, it made you rank your friends who the top eight. So you had like a top eight section and you could put whoever you wanted in what order. You could put music up on it. But the the most fun part about MySpace was that you was this the most fun? I actually don't really know. Well, you used to be able to like edit your background too. That was like a lot of fun for a while. Like, but Tumblr you could do that as well. So, not so much unique to MySpace, but it was like a thing you could do. But there was a specific part of MySpace called bulletins. And on bulletins, that would go to everyone who was your friend. They could see your bulletin. Your bulletin. They could interact with your bulletin. But most of what we did with those bulletins, I mean, at least most of what I did was, well, well, I was asked not to come back to my high school for the rest of the year because of something I said on a bulletin. That's a story for another time. It might come up today. But also, we would do these surveys. Basically, you would fill them out. Um, there was, like, stupid questions. On MySpace, I was not as verbose, right? Didn't belabor the question. But let's belabor the question today. That's, like, really the journey that I want to take. Anyway... If you were like me, I would, someone would post a survey and if I liked the questions, I would take the survey and I would just delete their answers. I wouldn't even read their answers. So it was definitely a way to make it feel like you were having interactions with other people. But I think everyone did what I did is like you would just copy the survey questions and then delete their answers, but not even really read them because you were like so excited to put your own answers in. And like sometimes you would take hours and hours to like get the perfect answer, try to put things in there to impress your crushes so that they would talk to you about it. Again, I don't think they were paying attention. Anyway, that's what, that's where, that's the origin. That's the very brief origin story of the MySpace survey. But let's answer some questions because I thought this could be fun. So I just did a quick Goog, did a quick Goog. I am on a website called radiancereflected.com. The, the post is called Like Ye Old Days of MySpace, 50 Random Questions. Okay. So, candle number one. Candle number one. That's a spoiler. Question number one. What's your favorite candle scent? Okay. I don't know how specific... I don't know how specific th they're trying to be. My favorite candle scent is uh, basically anything that smells like a, a cheap cologne that smells like masculine, but like, like uh, um, what is it? teakwood mahogany teakwood from bed bath and beyond that's like a very good example baseline of a candle that i would enjoy i don't know what it is i do not really like fruity things oh i do like a thing with i like a sandalwood I like anything that smells like you walked into the lobby of an expensive boutique hotel like that is the vibe when it comes to a candle i don't often purchase candles i like having them but i feel like i burn through them too fast and it's like that weird thing where it's like, I'm not into candles enough to buy a nice candle that has a nice burn time. And so then I get candles that are not of high enough quality that like don't meet my expectations where like I kind of burn them in one day and then they're gone. So that that would be the candle. That's the candle. That's the vibe with the candle for me. 
What female celebrity do you wish you were related to? Well, Marina. I mean, like, she's... Do you see her? She's, like, right there. Of course it's Marina. I don't think I need to explain further. What male celebrity do you wish you were, was your brother? Now, that's a trick question. Because... I, I couldn't, it couldn't be someone I was attracted to. It, it's a different thing, right? I could be sisters with Marina, but I couldn't, like, be brothers, you know, with, like, Sean Mendes, you know? So, it would... Someone funny. Who's funny? A funny man. <laughs> That's, like, really impossible. I'm thinking about it. Oh, Bowen Yang. Bo and Yang, famously of the Lost Culturistas podcast, but also on Saturday Night Live. Uh, big fan. And I think I think it'd be really fun for him and I to kiki. So that'd be a fun thing to do. I think that, or like, I mean, I like Matt Rogers too, but I think I'd pick Bowen. Okay, so what's your favorite thing about marriage? And then it says, caveat, if you're not married, what's your favorite thing about being single? There was like no in between, right? Uh, I'm living in a gray area. Um, what is fun about this great, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I changed the question, but I'm making it more personal to me. Um, not great area, like in a bad way, just like, I'm neither one of those things, but I'm also, I would say like, casually dating someone. So, but like, not like, I'm not calling that person my boyfriend. Do you know what I mean? So, um, in that scenario, what is the most fun? Well, I love a cuddle. I know that could be in any kind of relationship, but I love a cuddle. Um, big on cuddling. I've talked about this before. Big on cuddling. So we are still getting to do things that are new experiences for both of us. So it's like when we went to the movies was like the first time we got to go to the movies together. So it, even though it's something that it kind of makes that. It makes activities that are pretty, like, banal to you or things that you would have done many times in your life over and over again, like, fun and new again. So I think that's, like, my favorite part. Just, like, getting to experience, like, a first with someone, even though it's, like, a thing that you don't definitely have done before, but, like, experiencing it together and, like, what that experience is like for you. Oh, what's one thing that you probably should get rid of that you own but just can't. I like don't know the answer to this question. Oh, that's a good answer. So I have a keyboard over here. There's like a, a full keyboard, like it, all the keys. That sounds weird, but there are like options when that comes to that. And it's pretty big and I never play it. I'm not, a, I'm not, I've never taken piano lessons. I can like play some chords. I can like do some things. Like I, I could play the piano in the sense that if I was reading music, I could play it on the piano, but I could not play chords. Like I've never learned how to read music as a piano player. And I also don't know how to read the bass clef. And I never play it. I do have a little, the other, the other, the other part of this question that's important to know is that I do have a small MIDI keyboard that whenever I want to like play with music production and stuff that I can just use. But I'm never going to sit down and just like play this for fun. So I should get rid of it. It's, it's old. It's at least, it's at least 10 years old, probably more. I think I got it in high school. So much older than that. So I would say probably not. I keep looking at it as if you guys can see it, but it's like dusty and, but it still works. It's like a nice piano. I know my parents spent a lot of money on it for me. So I need to, I do need to pass that on. I don't know why I can't get rid of it. I just like having it. I like the aesthetic of that. I'm a musician, but I wouldn't call myself a musician. Can you do a split? It's been a minute. Not, not as long as you probably think, but it's been... I, de I definitely did a split last year. It's I, I would have to like stretch a bit before I did it, but um, I'm not going to demo it because I don't feel like changing my camera situation. I can I'm, I was much better at it with my left foot leading forward and I, I have to do it front back. I cannot do I used to be able to do a split like this, but um, I can't do that anymore. How old were you when you learned to ride a bike? I think I was about 10. I felt like I was old to be learning how to ride a two wheel bike without it, like the training wheels. But I think it was 10. How many countries have you been to? I have only been to Canada and it was at Niagara Falls. So we just drove across and then we came back. So it was very brief. How many oceans have you swam in? 
The one that's on the East Coast. Atlantic? Yeah, because the other side of the country is Pacific Standard Time. That would make sense. That was alarming. It's fine. Is anyone in your family in the army? A cousin that I was not close to was in the army, but no one in my immediate family was. Well, my grandfather, I think, was... was One of my grandfathers, both my grandfathers served, but I think they were drafted. I really don't know. Nor do I care to know. Honestly. What was your favorite TV show when you were a child? Okay, so, like, little kid, The Big Comfy Couch. The funny thing about that is, I cannot remember for the life of me what happens in that show. I know Lunette and Molly. I remember the clock. So that, more more on flexibility. I, I used to do that, too. I used to be able to, like, get my foot to do the clock thing, if you know what I'm talking about. And I also, not like getting a little bit older, I liked Sailor Moon a lot. But I was telling my friend this the other day. I have I love Sailor Moon. I love the concept, the premise of Sailor Moon. I don't think I've seen that many episodes of it in reality. Like, I know a lot of what happens, but I don't remember, like, seeing it. So I would say that, and like Power Rangers, those were like the, those were things that I remember being interested enough to have like merch and like liking the, like liking my toys from those franchises specifically because they were from those franchises. And now that I think back on it, it's like I had some pretty cool Sailor Moon toys that I wish I still had just aesthetically, aesthetic reasons. I mean, this is kind of an elaboration on the last question. It said, what did you dress up as on Halloween when you were eight? I don't know specifically, but very likely the pink Power Ranger. I was the pink Power Ranger many times as a child. She's my favorite. She was my favorite to be dressed up as. Have you read any of the Harry Potter, Hunger Games, or Twilight series? Well, I've read all three. I read all three. I I remember reading Hunger Games when the book released. Like, I was an avid young adult reader. But I think I might have been like, I might have been like considered an adult at the time when The Hunger Games came out. But I don't remember when the books came out. But I remember I loved The Hunger Games. Harry Potter, I read all of the books like in a month leading up to the last movie coming out. But I had seen all the movies, and I think I had read some of the books prior to that, but I definitely read all of them. And I read Twilight, and I distinctly remember reading the last Twilight book and throwing it at the wall. Specifically, when, spoiler alert, when Jacob imprints on Renezme, I threw the book at the wall and was like, this is the dumbest thing. I was also famously Team Jacob, which I don't know is like, is that popular? Maybe that, and then it was like, definitely, they weren't going to get together with Renesmee in the picture. So yeah, no. The, also, the concept of imprinting, I didn't know was real. I ha- I remember like Googling it and being like, oh no, this is like, is like a thing. So I didn't, you know, whatever. Would you rather have an American accent or a British accent? Well, I think this is like all a matter of opinion, right? Now, I don't think anyone really finds the American accent attractive like no I, I mean I don't know maybe maybe but I'm not from another country but I I feel like if I always had a British accent I wouldn't be like amused by it right and if I was always surrounded by people who had a similar accent to me as I do in America I would not find having a British accent special so I mean so I guess for the purposes of this just to answer it like it'd be fun to have a British accent but I I it would only be fun if it like somehow randomly happened in the middle of my life and it like didn't go away. But that makes it sound like I would have to get like some kind of brain trauma to have that happen because I'm not going to pretend to have a British accent because I there's I'm sure there's much nuance to it even though I like will sometimes jokingly go into one that I don't get and I don't care to get because I'm lazy. Have you ever taken karate lessons? No. No. I remember thinking it was tacky. <laughs> when I was young. Like, I didn't want to do that much stuff for belts. Do I know who Kermit the Frog is? Yeah. What was the first amusement park you've been to? Definitely Kennywood. I would have to assume it was Kennywood. Kennywood is like, Pittsburgh has a theme park. It's not Pittsburgh themed, but kind of. It's sort of because of where it is. But like, 
we have a theme park. I don't know. We have a theme park. It's sizable. It's obviously seasonal. We have Kennywood. I guess I have nothing else to say other than I have been to Kennywood. <laughs> what language besides your native language would you like to be fluent in? I mean, I think most reasonably Spanish because I live in a part of Pittsburgh that has a really high population of people who speak Spanish. And and it's like the one it's like the one that I encounter the most that isn't my own. And I always feel bad that I don't know it or that I can't speak it enough to like help other people. I wish I just knew Spanish only for that reason. But that's the most reasonable thing. I also think I would love to learn like Japanese because there's something about I forget what they call those types of languages, like those specific Asian types of languages where like you have the, the where you emphasize certain parts of things I, like I love that I think that's so cool and I would love to like learn the nuances of that however I can barely speak English <laughs> at this point and I don't really speak English that well because English isn't nuanced it's just stupid for the sake of being stupid I feel like <sighs> I feel like it was invented solely to be harder than all of the other languages. And it just like doesn't need to be that way. Do you spell the color gray with an A or an E? I think I used to spell it with an E and now I spell it with an A. And I think it's because of Tamaya Gray on season one of American Idol. But now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know how she spells her name. But it was the opposite of the way I thought it was spelled. And then I learned that it could be spelled either way. Anyway, do you prefer the Titanic or the notebook? I don't think anyone's going to like what I have to say here. Um, and I'm not saying it to be trite or controversial, controversial, if you will. I've never seen the Titanic all the way through. I definitely have seen the scene where the boat sinks, but I've not seen the rest of it. It was two VHSs, and I was like, that's absurd. I'm never going to watch a movie that's so long that they couldn't fit it all in one VHS. And I have seen The Notebook, so by default, I would say The Notebook. But I saw The Notebook one time. And I don't know what's wrong with the people who decide to watch it over and over again. Because not that the end is sad, but like the end is so emotional, um, overwhelmingly emotional, that's like, I'm not going to do that to myself again. Have you ever had Indian food? I actually haven't. I, and I think this is, this is something that like media taught me. And I, I don't, and I think this is like a bad thing. Like I think that media has given me the expectation that when I try Indian food, that I'm going to shit my brains out. And I don't know that that is the truth. Um, I don't know that that is the truth. And I don't think that that is the truth, but it has instilled a fear in me. Now, if if someone if I was with someone and they're like, we're getting Indian, I'd be like, yeah, let's absolutely do that. I wouldn't know what to order, but I would try it. It's not, it's not, it's, I think it's just one of those things. I've never tried it. So I, I've never thought about ordering it in for myself because I never, you know, it's just like not a thing that's at the forefront of my mind. But also when I order in, I like, it's almost always pizza. I don't order in a lot. Like maybe a couple, maybe like two times a month. And I just want pizza. It's a comfort food for me. <laughs> What's the name of your favorite restaurant? Um, I guess it doesn't have to be in the city in which I live. The restaurant that comes to mind is The Girl and the Goat in Chicago. The chef who runs it is someone who was on Top Chef, which is not a show I watch. But I will tell you that I've been there a couple of times and I've never not had a fun time there or a good experience. I really enjoy it. The first time was really my favorite time we went. I liked where we sat. I liked all of those. All of those things were really excellent. Have you ever been to Olive Garden? Yeah, I have. And un unfortunately, within the past 12 months, within the past couple of months, I hate it. It's not for me. It's not for me. And I'm not, I think I like, there's like Italian somewhere in my heritage, but like, I'm not snobby about Italian food. But here's the thing. I, one of my good friends is like, 
to b Italian to the core. Italian, snobby about it, like the food has to be a certain way, kind of Italian person. And once I had really good, both homemade and have gone to restaurants that are like Italian restaurants that are like, like that, I, I, that I've had, it's so different. It's so different. So like, I don't think Olive Garden is Italian food. I think it puts on a costume that is Italian food. But when you've had real Italian food, it just doesn't hold a candle to that. And I forget what the name, like, what do they call them? Fast comfort, fast, fast casual, fast casual dining just isn't for me. Um... <laughs> Now, there are other restaurants that are, like, at the same price point of the Olive Garden that I like to go to, but, like, fast casual chain restaurants, it's just, it's not what I'm choosing to go to. I would much rather go to a local place. So there's, I, I would say the equivalent to that nearby where I live is a place called Carboneras. And same thing, same vibe, but better. So I'm going to order from them because it's the same price point. I don't actually like dining in there either. I would just get takeout. Because that's what I, you know, that's what I'm going to do. I don't think I know the answer to this question. What would your parents have named you if you were the opposite gender? Um, I think th I'm going to twist this question and offer a new question. So I am actually technically sort of named after the grand my grandfather on my mother's side. Now, but I'm not actually. So... He went by Tom. Thomas was his middle name, but his first name was Lester. And I think my parents were trying to do me a solid by not naming me Lester. I thought about this a lot recently. <laughs> now, I had difficulties in school. I was ostracized for being different. That was like a big part of my like growing up experience. However, having the name Lester would have made that very difficult. But now that I'm an adult, Adult. There's, I've never met another person near my age named Lester. And I don't know that I've ever actually met another person named Lester. So I'm like, so in that, in that scenario, I think it's a cool name, but I understand. I understand. So I'm, I am named after my grandfather. That was like, that was my, I don't, I don't know. I turned it into a different thing. Um, do you have a nickname? What is it? Just Tom. Who's your favorite person in the world? Okay, I hate to do this again. Um, well, I was going to say Marina, but... I'm going to go ahead and say me. Would you rather live in a rural area or the suburbs? City is not an option. I always want to live in the city. Um, and that's just because I like being... As antisocial as I am, I like being around people, but I also like the access of being near a city. I don't drive, so I knew I do rely on public transportation if I do need to go somewhere. But at the, this current juncture, my full-time job, I work from home, so I, I'm not really leaving the house that often anyway. Also, since the beginning of COVID, it's been, you know, it, restrictions come and restrictions go. So it's just like, I'm not like leaving my house too often. It's so... So I would say if I have to pick, I would pick the suburbs, but I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. Going to the suburbs now, like when I go visit my parents, because I grew up in the suburbs, I, I don't know, something about it, it feels really sad. I don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, and also, like, I don't think I live in, like, the nicest house either. Like, I'm not saying that. It's, like, sad in the way where it's just, like, it's, like, trying to be some happy medium that it isn't. Maybe I would if I had, you know what, maybe I'm changing my mind. I would live in a rural, like, I wouldn't want anyone near me. I wouldn't want anyone near me. I would, I would want the opposite. I would have to learn how to drive, but I would want the opposite. <laughs> Can you whistle? <whistles> Do you sleep with a nightlight? I don't sleep with a nightlight, but I'm not opposed to a nightlight. Do you eat breakfast every morning? I, yeah, I do. I am eating breakfast later in the morning now. I work at 6 a.m. I mean, I'm only traveling to my computer, which is not far from where I am at any given time in the house. But I was eating breakfast before work. And then I found that I would be hungry for lunch at 10 a.m. because I ate at 5.30. 
And so then I was like, that can't, that can't be, that's not what I'm doing anymore. So now I kind of sleep later than I ever, like I was. So I now like wake up at 5.45, which I know is not late, but like I kind of like lay in bed and then I just kind of roll out of bed, get coffee and go to work. And then whenever my, my stomach tells me I'm hungry, I'll eat breakfast. But it's almost always peanut butter toast in case you were curious. How many times have I been to the hospital? Like as a patient? Twice. One time I was playing tag with my father and I, in the house, bounced off of him and the top of my head hit the corner of a wall corner and it cracked my head open. I had to get stitches. And then the other time I was in a car accident, but I, 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 it was fine. Like I wasn't affected. I, but it was one of those situations where like the insurance company asked me to go get checked out. Um, so I, the car insurance company asked me to go check. It's actually, it was like such a hullabaloo. But yes, those are the only two times I went to the hospital. Have I ever seen Finding Nemo? Yeah, I have. I saw it in theaters. And I remember laughing so hard at the part where the Ellen DeGeneres fish? Rory? She has her own movie. Rory. But I'm keeping, I'm thinking of the Gilmore Girls. So I don't know that I'm right. Anyway, she, tra- she talks to whales in the first movie. And I remember laughing so hard at that, that I thought I was going to throw up and pee my pants at the same time because of how hard I was laughing. You don't get those moments very often. But that I do remember thinking that that was like maybe one of the funniest things I saw at the time. I was a child. Where do I buy my jeans? So this is, this, okay. (laughs) I think I talked about this in one of my like clothing specific videos. My one friend bought a pair of good American jeans and said, I think you would like good American jeans. You should try them. Which I was like really hesitant to because it's like a Kardashian owned company. I love them. I love them. I have four pairs and I've been wearing two of them more because... Because I bought, you know how like some brands will have different types of jeans. I bought two different types and I like the one type of jean more. Wear them all the time. Like wear them all the time. If I'm wearing a jean, I'm wearing one of them. And they've been holding up really well. I really like them. I like the stretch they have. That's the that's the vibe. A good American jean is is what I'm going to buy. Now, I, I would buy secondhand denim. Like if I was buying like actual denim. But oftentimes, finding things in a Goodwill at my size is, like, pretty difficult. But also, most of the clothes that ends up in a Goodwill that is in my size is ugly. But I will also argue this, is that a lot of the times, all of the things that I could fit into that are cute get bought by small people because they like to wear oversized things. It's a cycle. It's a cycle that I think is pretty vicious. And I don't, I don't know. I'm so disheartened by thrift shopping that it's, like, not, it's not my thing. I've, I, 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 but I don't, I don't, I don't buy clothes a lot. I kind of wear my clothes to, to the literal death. What was the last compliment I got? Um, non-specific person I'm dating. <laughs> he told me I was cute today. So that, I think that was my most recent compliment. Do you usually remember your dreams in the morning? No, I don't. I I really don't. The only time I remember having dreams a lot was when I was taking vitamin D and I would have nightmares. And it was the vitamin D, which is so bizarre because, you know, vitamin D is like you take it. It, it, like it's the supplement that you take when you can't be in the sun all the time. Right. So a lot of people take it in the wintertime up here because like, you know, and it gave me nightmares. I was having like nightmares whenever I was taking vitamin D. So I stopped doing that. My favorite beverage that isn't water. Well, so funny you should ask. It is a diet Dr. Pepper. How many pairs of shoes do I currently own? I don't know, maybe 30. How many do I wear? Five. It's, it doesn't. It didn't ask me how many I wear. But b- about five, five. I really this shirt keeps rolling up my back, and I don't know what's happening. But I like was like I'm gonna throw on a really comfortable shirt. Turns out, jokes on me. I'm also very a very fidgety sitter. I don't 
Unless I'm getting a tattoo, then I sit really still. But it's the only time. How old were you when you found out that Santa wasn't real? I don't remember, but I also remember not caring. When I found that information out, I was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Just give me presents. <laughs> what is one food that you used to hate but you now love? I used to be a very picky eater. And it was more where it was that I was not eating everything because I thought I wouldn't like it. But I would say maybe like the biggest turnaround would be like macaroni and cheese. I love macaroni and cheese. Ooh, ooh. And the the other thing is, I like quality mac and cheese, but I also like really shitty mac and cheese. Like, both answers are right. What is a weird lie you've told? I will say I lie, and I know I I try really hard not to lie often, but I will. The most of my lying comes whenever I, whenever I'm trying to tell someone I'm unavailable to hang out. And I really want to be that bitch who's like, Sorry, I know that I don't have anything going on tonight, but I also don't want you to be the person. Like, I, I don't also, I also, I also don't have the the grace and space to spend the time with you. Like, I just don't. So that, I, but those aren't weird lies. I don't really. I just will be like, oh, sorry, can't. I'm busy, and I will lie about. I'll make myself have other plans in in this scenario. Heels or flats? I mean, what are we doing? But most of the time, heels. I love a heel. I love a heel. I love a lift. I already have a really nice butt, but a heel just makes your butt look better. And there's, of course I love that. (sighs) Do you have any weird phobias? Okay, I think I have a weird, uh, I don't know that it's a phobia because it doesn't hinder me from doing anything, but it it does make, okay. It's like, I'm afraid of heights, but not really. Like, I'll get on a roller coaster. It doesn't freak me out. I will get on an airplane. It doesn't freak me out. I'm not afraid of flying. However, I have a big issue with heights. But it's not prohibitive. And, like, when I tell you, like, I get on a plane, it's fine. Like, I'm I'm not, I'm not going to go on a flight. I don't don't get panic attacks. I don't have to take a Xanax before flying. I fly really easy. I'll get on, like I said, get on a roller coaster. However, I and that makes it sound like I'm not afraid of heights. I have like a fear of falling. But I don't think it's the same. Not like when I'm on the ground. There has to be height. So like even a step ladder is enough height for me to be like, Ugh, I don't want to fall from here. Like, And I know that no one wants to fall from like. I would never willingly go bungee jumping. I would never jump out of an airplane. Fly on an airplane. I'm good. I'm good. And also, I think that that there's another maybe conscious thing that I have done where I'm like, if I'm going to be on an airplane and it goes down, I'm just dying. And I've accepted that. But to willingly jump out of an airplane, it's not the same to me. And that, that, so it's the falling aspect that really loses me. But I think there's, I'm a smart enough person to be aware that I'm very unlikely to die on a plane so that it doesn't scare me. And I'm very unlikely to get hurt on a roller coaster. So it doesn't bother me. So it's, it's it's like the willing act of to put yourself in a falling position is weird to me. And that's what I'm scared of. So no. The answer to the, if do I have any phobias? Not really. I, I, there are like a lot of things I don't like, but I don't want to call them any, any of them phobias. What is a phrase or word you always say? Uh, I, will, I will often go listen and then not say anything. <laughs> When someone is trying to explain something to me and I disagree, I'll just go listen and then I won't provide anything back. So like, listen, there's a phrases come and go. It do be like that. I, this one is new. This one was pointed out to me, but apparently I, I say whenever I'm like cleaning up the house just a little bit, I call it, I'm fixing up the house and I don't know where that comes from. I don't know. Just fixing it up. Just doing a little fixing up. But I'm not like doing, I'm just like cleaning just visible, not filth, but like visible stuff. What is a song that you blast or that you, yeah, blast or bell out when you're alone? I mean, all of it. I'll do that with people around though. I don't, it changes, right? It's, it's a different thing. Right now it's Lover Girl by Tina Marie. 
What is one of your biggest pet peeves? I used to have so many when it came to work, but I've like relinquished, not my current job, but like when I worked in retail, I had many pet peeves. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, a lot of things annoy me. But I'm just trying to think of like specific patterns of behavior that would make me like immediately go get the ick. Like immediately get the ick. So many things. I think maybe that's that. <laughs> that's that. I was recently told, and I think this was kind of related. <sighs> I've been told that I have opinions on more things than most people have opinions on. Like today I was expressing my opinions on floral arrangements and how I think, and obviously I'm going to say this up top, no offense to people who are interest in, interested in floral arrangements and like the act of doing it. Like if you like to take flowers and arrange them, I think that that, that I, I'm glad that's fun for you, but I think that's like the dumbest thing in the world. Like I don't know what I don't know why. And I, I went on a rant to my one friend who was doing a floral arrangement about how I think it's stupid. But I don't know. I, I mean, I gave reasons, but I don't. I don't know why I think that, but I do. You know. So I just have a lot of opinions. So it's hard to be me. <laughs> do you sleep with your door? With your oh, sorry, do I sleep with my closet door open or closed? Well, I don't really have a closet in this room. It's so basically, I commandeered the laundry room to be my closet <laughs> because I live in the basement and I didn't want to buy an external closet. So that door stays open most of the time. I only close it when I'm recording because if the washing machine's running, that picks up on microphone or if air conditioning or, or the heating unit is on. It is loud and you can hear it on the mic. Would you rather be attacked by a big bear or a swarm of bees? I'm going to say bees. I'm not allergic to bees. I mean, it wouldn't be fun, but I do believe that a bear would tear me apart. And you know what? I don't want to know the feeling of being torn apart by a bear. I have been stung by bees before though, and manageable. Not, not fun by any means, but I mean, obviously it's a swarm, but like, I don't know. I would, yeah, that sounds much better than being torn torn apart, torn apart by a bear. Do you have any weird things you do? Like literally my whole life is weird. Like, I don't know. I do so many weird things. And it's one of those things where people point out my weird behavior and I go, I don't understand what you mean. Um, and the other thing it's more scary is that there's no traceable point where I develop that habit or like why I would do that thing. That's the scarier part. What? Okay, this is the last question. What movie could you watch over and over again and still love? Um, like literally none. Like I don't, I'm not a big movie watcher. I have like some favorite movies, but I watch them like once a year. I would say maybe the thing that is closest to this and, and I have experienced in practice is the movie Pitch Perfect. And I think that's just, I really like that movie, but I also think it's nice to have on the background. Um, and I can look up for my favorite parts. Like I've seen it that, I've seen it that many times, but it was also on cable. Like it was also on like network TV a lot. So I would just like come across it and it'd be, I'd put it on, but I was never like really sitting down. Like I don't have any movie where I would like go out of my way to watch it over and over again. But it seems like that's like what everyone is doing with Bruno. And I understand when you have children who are interested in children's media, that's a thing that you're going to have to go through. But unfor like, unfortunately, no, luckily for me, I have no plans for kids. So I can avoid that altogether. Okay, that was the 50th question. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I'm not going to ask you to like this video. I just wanted to not go completely silent while my eye was still healing. I'll try to find a good makeup tag, or if you know of any makeup tags you would like to see me answer questions to, let me know down below. Or, you know, I don't know. I think that it might still be a few more days before I'm able to film with makeup, which is really annoying. <laughs> oh, you know what's? I think I, I think I was supposed to buy something today for a review. Okay. Cause it went on sale today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate anyone who's watched this whole video and had a good time. Let me know some of your answers to the questions down below. I promise I won't delete your answer to the question 
in order to answer the question again down in the comments below, even though I said that's a thing I do. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I will see you in the next one. Bye, friends.